that's stuff about me. <laughs> I'll cut through that pretty quick. All right, um, so the deal with this is uh, we as security uh, professionals have a crap ton of tools to deal with on a daily basis. Um, I know that I have, uh, I work in the uh, Virginia Tech, I work in the IT security office there, and we have the Tomb of Software, which is a hundred uh, sleeve DVD case. I'm sure you guys have something similar. Uh, you've got all these bootable tools, all these things that you need for different environments, and it's a big pain to keep up with. Um, you loan them out, you lose them, and um, sometimes you need them, like incident response. You need them right away. So uh, I thought, well, I'd try to put all that stuff together. So what Katana does is it brings um, a bunch of live distributions, like Backtrack, uh, together with portable applications that will run in Windows uh, from a single USB flash drive. So no longer keeping up with the, the tomb of software and you know, wondering which computer that certain thing is installed on, you can put it all on a single flash drive, keep it in your pocket, very convenient. I'm sorry, it's not showing up in here, it's showing up in there, so I'm, I'm definitely not messing with it. Um, and another thing about USB flash drives, which is a little more convenient than your normal CD DVD, is you can change things on there on the fly. Unlike a CD, you know, you've got that, you can change it, but you have to reburn an ISO, burn it again. Uh, USB flash drive is a dynamic environment, makes things a lot easier uh, for you to modify. CD versus USB. Um, some of this I've uh, just covered, but uh, a lot of it is, is speed. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to boot a live CD versus a USB version of a live thing, of the same live operating system, but it is way faster. Especially when you're, you know, you're doing stuff and everything's cool, and then you click on something new, and then just gotta spin up again and find that stuff. It's a lot faster from USB flash drive. Um, two, two of the drawbacks, you can see up there on bold, in bold, kind of the things that I deemed to be a benefit for either side. Uh, the one benefit, or two benefits for CD. One, um, a lot, almost every distro, every live distro basically supports CD. I mean, some are just floppy, but that's very old. Um, and uh, the other is um, uh, the BIOS support. Um, if you're working with some older systems, if, if you haven't booted from a uh, USB, the BIOS is sometimes have it turned off, have it turned on. Most modern BIOSes will support USB boot. Um, I'd say that started in the like early 2000s, but prior to that, uh, they're like, uh, you want to boot from what? No, CD is the way to go. So um, that can be an issue when you're working with some of the older systems. All right, so I mentioned you know, I have this grandiose tool suite and we'll talk a little bit more about what's in there, um, but I want to talk about who made the cut. Um, it's really hard, you know, when you're looking through all these suites of tools because there's so many and they're so awesome, but a lot of them overlap. So what I tried to do is I didn't, you know, I'm not necessarily saying that these are definitely the best tools, they're just the ones that I found. Um, as I said, the dynamic environment, you can actually modify and, you know, add or remove as you want. Uh, free for personal use. Uh, you that are working in the corporate environments with, act, with um, Katana, you, you need to check the licenses before you use it because um, I was looking at it as, you know, personal uh, fun thing to use all the time, but uh, I can't guarantee all the licenses are that. Um, unique, I mentioned that, and currently supported for the most part. Something like, you know, Netcat, which was made a long time ago, works beautifully. I kept that in there because, you know, current support, you know, I, don't know, I don't know when the last time the official version came out, it was quite a while ago. But for the most part, everything needs to be currently supported um, so that you guys can get the, the, new, the best and the uh, brightest uh, new software out there um, to keep around with you. All right, so I have a DEF CON free release. Uh, it is available at the Hackers for Charity booth just on the other side of these walls over there all the way to the back. Um, this is the, uh, so it's 2.0. Um, I have a 1.0 and 1.1 release, so if you don't get it there and don't want to like do the dev and the new stuff, uh, you can get it on the website. Um, I, uh, it seems so bad after the presentation today that I have to say that there was, there's a couple of flaws in this release. Uh, that's why I said instead of pre-release it is now officially a beta release. Um, and I will get into more of that in just a second. So the starting lineup for Katana. Um, this is what I've included by default. Uh, you can really think of that as uh, the default settings. This is what I give you. Um, I tried to kind of get the wide gamut of different kinds of tools that uh, system administrators might use. Um, 
not really f trying to focus on anything in particular. You know, I took backtrack as the pen testing one. I have Kane as the forensics one. Are there other great distros out there? Absolutely. And I encourage you to look into those too. These are, you know, not, these are not, this list is not the only things that do this stuff. But I couldn't include everything because it's already several gig in size and if I gave you a file that was, you know, 32 gig download, I'm sure nobody would ever use it. So this is the default lineup. I'll talk about installing stuff a little later. Here's my epic fail. Second epic fail, apparently. Um, <laughs> backtrack is not working. So it's not the fault of Backtrack. Beautifully. I, I screwed this up. Uh, my thumb drive died on Friday as I was devving. Everything was great. I was all ready to, to make my, you know, I, it's all in the RAR files. I put it, ready to put it together, together. It dies on me. My last backup was two and a half weeks prior to that. So I know, and I look, no, lessons learned. <laughs> lessons learned, people. I, I, I had a backup. What does it say? Backup often. Backup the backup. And backup often. Okay, let, let my mistakes, you know, you guys can learn from that. Uh, yeah, so that was awesome. So basically, um, using some of the forensics tools provided, plug, uh, I could not use Autopsy C to recover all my files. Very sad. I ran, this is forensics hints for some of you people, Autopsy C is awesome. Um, I ran strings against the entire 8 gig uh, uh, flash drive and had to analyze that so I got a couple of things back like the, the documentation um, and that was really all I got back. So I had to kind of uh, start from scratch-ish from that point. So I spent one day trying to recover and then I stayed up for 36 hours basically fixing everything <laughs> that I had done in the prior two and a half weeks. So I apologize for that not working. Um, if there's any other bugs, especially if there's misspellings, I just kind of, it, there's new features and the stuff should work and I tested last night. It, it seems like all the other operating systems working fine but uh, that particular thing, ah, uh, epic fail on my part. However, there's a simple fix. You don't have to do anything crazy. Uh, if you download, ah, oh, I left the RAR. It's actually an ISO, the Backtrack 4 uh, ISO. Download it, burn it, copy the Casper file into the Backtrack folder on Katana, replace all the files. Basically what happened is the whole uh, file system didn't finish copying over. So that's why everything screwed up. So it is a simple fix but it's just not going to work right off the bat. Again, a uh, thousand apologies. Okay, so going back to the original getting everything to work, um, the reason you might not have seen a lot of these multi-boot systems before is because they're a pain in the butt to get working just off the bat without thumb drives di dying on you. Um, what you need to do is get used to messing with Sys uh, Syslinux or Grub, which are the bootloaders. Um, and then there's the initialization files and that's kind of how I got everything working because you cannot have duplicate directories in the same structure. And that is a fact that everybody here should probably know. So what happens is all the file systems want to load from a certain area so you have to change that area. So you have to figure out how to do that and every single operating system is different. So it would be beautiful if there was one like quick fix for everything. But no, I have to analyze every operating system differently. Baseline ones, Ubuntu versus Slacks versus Nopix versus, you know, if they've modified it and, you know, the security distribution that has also made modifications, I have to figure out what those are and changes around. So that's why it's not just a simple straightforward thing that you see posted around uh, a lot. I have to go through and analyze a lot of these files. Um, I put in binary. The first time I started developing, I uh, didn't know that it was a, uh, an image file that I was messing with, which is easy. You just mount it. And I wish I'd known that. I went in with a hex editor and tried to replace things. <laughs> which was not good because the file that I want to change is the same name as like everything. It's called the Casper file and like that word is everywhere. So looking through a hex editor trying to find it took forever and then, you know, that took like two months to look at and then, you know, I read some posts somewhere. They're like, oh, it's just an image file. You mount it. It's like, oh my gosh. Mount it and then, you know, two seconds later everything works. So that's another, you know, that's when you get into building tools like this, the things you have to get through. Um, and that was about a year ago, I guess I should have mentioned, I started this project uh, about a year ago, right before uh, DEF CON last year. And the cleanup. 
Uh, I tried to make this, as I said, I wanted to make a dy dynamic environment, people to be able to change and update things as they want. So I tried to clean up the folder structures so you didn't have, I mean, if you look at the Ultimate Boot CD, it's got folders strewn everywhere. It basically looks like the systems folder in Windows. You know, it's just got all kinds of stuff. So I made a, lot, a big effort into making things in nice little compact directories. You know, you go into the root of Katana, you see, you know, the backtrack directory or the cane directory, and you say, okay, well, that's where that stuff obviously is. It wasn't that way originally, so I've made a big effort to make it uh, a lot easier for people to uh, modify on their own. So, uh, adding distros. I don't have a ton of time. I am a grad student and I am trying to graduate soon. So I can't <laughs> devote all this time to all the great distros out there. And there are so many out there that it's very difficult. I just try to cover what I can. So I'm going to go through a little bit about how you can add your own distro or you know popular distros that I don't haven't supported yet. Um, how you can go through and make these modifications to add your own. So I'm going to give the example of uh, Samurai, uh, the current version of Samurai. Um, pretty simple in the beginning. Uh, so you just get the ISO, download it, uh, you mount it, or you burn it. However you want to get access to it, and um, save it. Yeah, for this particular one. Uh, yeah, you just make a samurai directory since it's called samurai. Um, in whatever distro name, you kind of insert that there. And then this is the tricky part is figuring out which initialization files to mess with. Um, a, for basically Ubuntu versus Napix, a lot of those are the same. Uh, I'll, cu I'll cut through this pretty quick because I know this is, this is dry and boring, but I want to keep these in the slides for people to contribute to the project. Um, so yeah, this is just an example of for this particular one, the file structure that needs to be changed. Uh, and then you change the boot menu, adding everything there, and you edit and add some more stuff to the main configuration file for the boot menu. And that is long and boring. So I'm just going to show you if this works. <laughs> I, I would be very lucky if I could actually do this. Oops. It's, yeah, okay, there we go. This is what it looks like when you boot up. Same as a lot of other distros if you're used to booting from live stuff. Um, it's here. Most of the stuff works except for the first one, which most people will end up using. So that makes it like the worst possible thing that could have failed. So when you add stuff in here, it'll pop up. You add a new distro, pop up in the menu section. Congratulations, you've got an even cooler tool uh, on you. Okay. Leaving that and going back to the demo. Oh, going back. Okay. So I just went through that boring information about changing the initialization files and right now uh, the only way, before the only way I had it is I posted some forums, some explanations. It's, you know, kind of technical and whatnot. I've created a front, a script front end to make things so much easier. So you don't have to go through all the pain that I've gone through in developing it. Um, all you have to do is select which one you want to install. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going quick too. But thank you for the applause. Yeah. <laughs> so this should make things a lot easier and maybe, you know, uh, things will work for you guys. So uh, all you have to do, you, uh, you select which one you want to, uh, the distro. Right now I have three different ones working. Uh, you download the ISO, you tell it which directory, and you, you hit go, install, and it'll, you know, install for you. It's like UNET booting. I think a lot of people have probably used that before to install things, except they only install one at a time and I have to somehow figure out how to, you know, make all these things work together happily. So right now I have uh, three different ones working, um, Samurai, WeakNet, and something else that I'm forgetting off the top of my head. But uh, hopefully by the full release I'll have at least a dozen is what I'm shooting for. So while you already have, what, ten distributions on there, you can, you know, if you decide I want, you know, the kitchen sink, you can have ten different distributions or I guess at that point, you know, like twenty different distributions on your thumb drive for any kind of response. Um, so uh, as I mentioned before, I encourage people to, to look into other ones because I don't have a lot of time um, and then I can add that to this. So your contributions help quite a bit and especially if you're developing a distro and like to add it here, um, I can, you know, walk people through how to do that for their individual distro. Uh, okay. This is the, was the basic navigation stuff. I just kind of included these slides because I wasn't sure, if, you know, people had done that before. So getting on to the Katana toolkit. So the, the live ISO side a lot of people are used to, the live booting side. 
This not so many people uh, have used um, portable applications. So what portable is is basically it means it doesn't have to install onto your host system. That's not to say it doesn't actually edit some registry or make some other modifications. So I wouldn't say it's 100% forensically sound to run all of these to say, oh, no modifications.